Welcome. Are we John? We're on. Okay, thank you. Um, for anyone who's watching us live, we had a little excitement. The fire alarm went off. So we had to wait till they came off. Uh, the fire department came in and switched it off. Thankfully, there is no fire, right, Dr. There De Silva? No there is no fire. Everybody was safe. Uh, but there was a bit of excitement. So, um, and I believe somebody did that because I was speaking, but that's just my personal opinion. I'll keep it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, thank you. I'm glad they shared. They've obviously left. So we're just going to move on with the agenda item and go to the RHS Student Memorial. Of course, uh, because we couldn't close it, uh, we, if you have questions, if you have further questions, you know, you want to hear something more from the team, please let me know or Dr. De Silva know and we'll address that. Right, moving on to the RHS Student Memorial. Bless you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Greenwood, you want me to turn it right over to you? Sure, we're ready. Okay. Everybody ready? Okay, good. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for seeing us. Uh, tonight, uh, we're here to talk about the Nia Simpson Memorial proposal and also a courtyard beautification project that we'd like to talk to you about. So, John, next slide. Going fast. Okay, so... Uh, starting back in February, I met with Ms. Simpson and Mrs. Idone to talk about Board of Ed Policy 1180, and that is um, concerning memorials, um, particularly for um, students and staff. Um, and in that, we also toured some common spaces um, so we could um, have some conversation around what that might look like at RHS, uh, obviously to memorialize uh, Nia Simpson, uh, a junior at the high school. Uh, in uh, March, we met again with members of the student government, some of which I have here forming the RHS Nia Simpson Memorial Committee, which is in the board policy that you have a committee, which includes um, community members um, and, and um, uh, liaisons from the school. So we have students, of course, and myself uh, and several teachers. Um, and so Mrs. Simpson, Mrs. Idone, myself, Mr. Julio, Dr. Aaron, Ms. Fowler, and members of the student government um, composed that committee. They're all here tonight. They can wave. <laughs> Um, so we shared our ideas for Memorial and areas at RHS for possible placement. Uh, over the next month, various meetings and planning sessions by the committee, working over and over and over again to tighten up the presentation and the idea of what they might want to do. Um, and then heading into 4-4, we had a follow-up meeting with the full committee to agree on a plan, which led to a 4-5 meeting myself with Dr. De Silva to discuss Board of Ed Policy 1180, the committee membership, and then plans for the Memorial at that meeting. Um, she said it was okay to go ahead and ask and grant permission to be here tonight to present the proposal to you all. Um, and so then over the next few weeks, the committee finalized those plans, agreed upon the budget to be graciously donated by the Nia H. Simpson Memorial Foundation, um, and also prepared for this presentation. So I just wanted to backtrack and let everybody know the timeline and where we've been over the past few months, which brings me to the point in space, which I love in the meeting, which is where I turn it over to my wonderful students. So next slide. Make sure you hit the Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. De Silva, and the Richfield community. My name is Hannah Yu, and I am the Community Outreach Officer on the RHS Student Government. Nia Simpson was a, was a dedicated and beloved member of the Class of 2024 Student Government, a member of the Girls Ice Hockey and Lacrosse teams, and a motivated student. As treasurer, she always showed up to work hard with a smile. When Nia passed away this past October, the entire RHS community felt the loss. Next slide, please. As a community and in conjunction with Nia's family, we want to create a memorial to honor her memory. We decided to create an outdoor space for all students to enjoy. In keeping with the Board of Ed policies regarding placing plaques as memorials, we are interested in revitalizing a student space which will be enjoyed by the class of 2024 and all students for years to come. In partnership with the Nia Haley Simpson Foundation in, a, in the Ridgefield community, we propose dividing the area into three parts, an interactive courtyard, a reflective area, and a hand-painted mural by student government members. Dr. DeSantis so kindly provided this aerial photo of the space that we would like to transform, as you can see on the slides. Here is our vision for the area to reflect the idea of creating a life of purpose to accompany the memorial plaque. Next slide, please. 
Good evening. My name is Chloe McKinstry, and I'm a junior on our, or I'm a senator, sorry, on our junior class council. Um, in order to thoroughly honor our classmate Nia, we hope to decorate the courtyard area with a mural that embodies her spirit. The quote, create a life of purpose, is one used frequently by her parents and the Nia Haley Simpson Foundation to continue Nia's legacy and promote positivity in a time of grief. In the mural, we plan to combine paintings as well as mosaics to create a floral arrangement. We will incorporate a variety of Nia's favorite flowers as well as butterflies, and the design will be properly sealed with UV protection and waterproofing to ensure the longevity of Nia's message, as well as the vivacity of the colors we use. Next slide, please. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Maddie Winslow, and I'm the public relations officer for the class of 2024. Um, there's also a courtyard right when you walk outside the student center. Uh, we'd like to clean it up and make it a place for gathering. First, we'd like to paint butterflies on the student center windows. Nia loved butterflies, so we want to honor her memory with a visual. We'd also like to replace the flower pots in the courtyard with more permanent stone. Uh, there are a few wooden tables in the courtyard, and we want to arrange them in a circle to bring them together. In the center of the tables, we'd like to put board games. This way, students can sit outside and enjoy the sun while having fun with their friends. Surrounding the courtyard is grass. We'd like to put new plants around the edges. Right now, the plants are dead and not aesthetically pleasing. Finally, we plan to paint rocks and line the windows along the student center called kindness rocks. We will organize a couple flex sessions, which anyone can attend so students outside of the community memorial group can contribute. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, I'm Abby Seal. I'm a senator on the junior class council. Uh, this is the reading nook, and this place will be a place of reflection. With the community bookcase as the focal point, students and any person in the Ridgefield community will be able to take a book and leave a book at their leisure. Around the bookcase, there will be many outdoor seating options, including chairs and benches placed in a circular shape. Additionally, flowers and trees will be planted along the side of the loading dock to create a more secluded place. Finally, a possible, idea, a possible idea to be added to the space is a chalkboard wall that will be named the Grateful Wall. This wall will be an opportunity for members of the RHS community to be able to submit messages and art to be placed on the wall. Overall, this space will allow students to be calm and reflect on what, they, on what we appreciate in life. Next slide, please. So here is our expected timeline for the project. We plan to start as soon as possible. So this will allow us to finish by the start of the school in the fall. So that it is ready for the start of the next school year, which also coincides with Nia's birthday. For the future, our maintenance plan is to have the current junior class council be responsible for the seasonal upkeep of the space. This will ensure that the space continues to be enjoyed by the students of RHS for years to come. In terms of budget, we have $10,000 that was generously donated by the Nia Haley Simpson Memorial Fund. So this money will be used for cleanup, supplies for the mural in the rock garden, as well as new plantings. Next slide, please. Listed above are all the community members on the community, which includes parents, students, teachers, and admin. Special thank you to Dr. De Silva, Dr. DeSantis, Mr. Moritz, and the Nia Haley Simpson Foundation for your support. Thank you so much for your for thank you so much for listening, and we appreciate your consideration of our proposal. At this time, we are happy to answer any questions that you have. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to the board. I just want to say thank you. And um, thank you to Ms. Simpson, who's in the back there. And I think Mr. Simpson as well. And we appreciate you being here and, and sharing your smile. That much resembles that of your daughter. Um, thank you. Agreed. Sorry. Any questions? I I just have a comment, if that's all right. Um, so, just thank you guys. Liz, hang on one sec, Miss. Uh, we Ms. can't Global. see you. One second. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say thank you. Um, this is beautiful, and what a fitting tribute to uh, a beautiful part of our our high school community and uh to mrs simpson and your family thank you for contributing this and i think it's just absolutely gorgeous so thank you to the student government and everyone that's been involved with this planning
I want to say thank you too, and that it's wonderful what you're doing. And thank you so much. Thank you. I know how tough it must be. Sorry. Thank you to all of you. All the work that you're doing, I think it reflects in everything. I'm sorry, I can't. I just, just thank you. And thank you, to Sophia and Dave. Thank you. I, I know how incredibly hard this has been for you. So thank you for sharing the joys. And thank you for always keeping Nia's memory alive. So I think I think that comes to an end for you girls and you, you get to go home and we just again um, on behalf of the Board of Education and the administration, uh, what our gratitude really evidences is not only your leadership, but uh, the quality of the, the person and the people that you really are and um, a wonderful tribute to a wonderful young lady that um, we'll remember for many, many years to come. Dr. Greenwood? Can I ask a just a clarification. Uh, I believe um, now we have to wait to go to the next. Okay, I just wanted to, for the, for the kids' benefit, can you let them know the next step? Yeah. Please? So what happens? Um, what happens, girls, is that we do. We will have to come back. Oh no, we have a motion, right? Uh, no, we don't. So what happens, girls, is you're gonna. You don't actually have to physically come back because you were here long enough with the fire drill. So as a result. You don't have to, although you're welcome to. Um, so what will happen is we will have a meeting in about two weeks where um, there will be a motion to approve the gift um, the, of the memorial here at the Board of Education. So you can watch it from home or you can absolutely choose to, to, come, to come here, but you don't need to if you, if you feel like, um, I feel confident that I, I think that um, this will move along um, well, swimmingly. So um, I don't think you'll need to come back. But thank you, Dr. Greenwood, for keeping us well, in line you. with the rules. Thanks. Well, these, they'll have shovels at school tomorrow. If I didn't, so, so okay. I just want to be sure. Right. So, <laughs> so thank yes, you, very much. you do officially. You do have to wait until it's uh, formally approved. So no shovels tomorrow. Yes. Or rocks, but don't but don't spend the money in any other way because that's where it's going to go. Yes. And we look forward to seeing all this follow. Thank you for everything. Take Thanks, care. And girls. thank you for your patience. And thank you for staying. Have a good night. Dr. De Silva, there's a question. Can we make a motion to approve tonight or by policy we have? To... You're asking no. the wrong person. So because it has to be on, I think it has to be because it's a discussion, it has to be on the agenda so that the public uh, is aware. Yeah, I, so I, we can't add a vote in public. Right, Jonathan, if I remember. Yeah, where's Cheryl? Unless there was two thirds, I thought we had, if we had two thirds of the board agreeing to add an agenda item, wasn't there? Can we Have make a vote to? to add, to approve this? Yes. Two meetings. The, na the naming policy is two meetings. Yeah. The, is that what you're saying? Correct. So it'll be at the next meeting. To skip a meeting. First, yes, you're right. Yeah, it is. Well, thank you. That was a good suggestion. Um, well, actually, give me time to catch my breath. So thank you. Uh, moving on to policy, second read. Rachel? Oh, no, so, let, sorry. I'm a little off. Let's have the motions. I move that the Board of Education approve the new policy 4118.31-4218.31 Emergency Action Plan for Athletic Events. Do we have a second? Thank you. 
Any discussion? So you will see blue recommended language for a second read tonight. Um, John had an excellent question. The blue language is supported with number five in the policy um, around the external defibrillator. And I also did cross-reference with our general statutes. They are mentioned and linked in statute 10-212D. Um, so that language is reflective of that. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Any other comments or discussion? I, I just have a question, um, and I may have asked this before, and I apologize. Um, do, does this policy get communicated once finalized to the other um, emergency response communities in town? So the other first responders, CERT, et cetera, um, so that we have some similarities in responses or anything, or they know where the contact lists are or anything like that? Uh, we don't do that, Liz, but there's no reason we couldn't. Okay. So we, we can absolutely do that. Okay. Yeah, because it says we distribute it to the internal community, even if it's not in the policy, which is fine. Um, it may be sort of a best practice to ensure that others we rely on for emergencies are fully vetted as well. Just a thought. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. The motions, uh, we had a second. All those in favor of approving this policy? Eight, thank you. Moving on. I move that the Board of Education approve the new policy 4118.32, exertional heat illness awareness. Do we have a second? Divya, any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in motion, uh, all those who want to approve this policy, please raise your hand. Eight, thank you. Next motion. I move that the Board of Education approve revisions to policy 3280, gifts, grants, and bequests. Do we have a second? Any questions, edits, comments? All those in favor of approving this policy, please raise your hand. Eight, thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve revisions to policy 4131 staff development. Do we have a second? Thank you. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this policy? Eight, thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve revisions to policy 4115, evaluation and support programs. Do we have a second? Selena, thank you. Any comments, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this policy, please raise your hands. Eight, thank you, and the line. I move that the Board of Education approve revisions to policy 4121, substitute teachers. Do we have a second? Any questions, edits, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this policy, please raise your hand. It's eight, unanimous, thank you. All done, thank you again to the policy committee for all your hard work in this. Moving on to the next agenda item, teacher non-renewals. Do we have a motion? I move that the Board of Education approve notification to Jade DeChessery. Laura Mat Matos, Marcella Mongardi, and Vanessa Perillo of non-renewal of their contracts at the close of the 2022-23 school year, and that the superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing for this action. Thank you. Do we have a second? All those in favor of approving this motion, please raise your hand. It's eight. Thank you. Moving on to the next motion, the nurse agenda item, nurses contract. Do we have a motion? I move that the Board of Education approve the contract between the Ridgefield Board of Education and Ridgefield Nurses for the period July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2025. Thank you. Do we have a second? Selena. Do we have a discussion or no? No. Nope. Nope. All right. No. All those in favor no, for this motion? 
It's eight, unanimous. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, make a little edit, please, uh, because Ms. Casey popped in last minute. I miscounted the minutes of the votes for approval of the 227 23 minutes. So um, there are eight in favor instead of seven. Sorry about that. All right, moving on to items of information, enrollment update. Karen, it's your night. Yes, it is. Uh, good evening again. Um, so you do have the most recent enrollment report. Um, the pattern remains very similar to previous months um, in that we have slight fluctuations at the building level, anywhere from being flat to a change of two students. Uh, once again, uh, the preschool leads with the highest number of enrollments of four um, from last month with a total of 12 additional students at 4,566. On the topic of enrollment, for those that are watching, if you know your neighbors and they have a kindergartner, please um, register your kindergartner for two reasons, many reasons, but two reasons that I'm asking tonight. Number one um, is that when you register your child, you're gonna get all of the information about mini K. Second, second is that based on our registrations, that is how we maintain our teachers and welcome teachers back to our school district that um, perhaps don't know if they're going to have a job next year. So please register, register your kindergartner. If you know a neighbor that hasn't registered their kindergartner yet, um, please do that as soon as possible. The Board of Education will start to receive those numbers next Board, board of Education meeting. I do have the numbers for right now. Okay. So we expected to have. Um, our projected enrollment was 285, and right now we have 202 kindergartners enrolled. So that's 71% of the projected enrollment currently as of this week. So beginning next month, what you'll see is past years in relation to this year so that you can compare the uh, previous years to this year to see how we're doing. But again, if you know folks, and we actually do know folks that have mentioned, oh, I, I'm planning on registering my kindergartner. Just haven't gotten around to it. So again, it makes a difference for teacher jobs and makes a difference for mini K. So please do that as soon as possible. And you may register online. Is that what I heard? Okay. <laughs> Corey, is that usually about what you see? Is that typical? Like about? Yes, actually, um, compared to last year, um, we also had about 70% enrolled at this time. Um, so that's about the responses people usually wait. I, I, I think so. And I can, we'll share the whole, I think I we have curious. data from uh, back to 17, 18. So um, we can show you March, 18. April, May, so, uh, 17 <laughs> years, 17, eight, 2017, 18. Yes. <laughs> so you'll be able to Not see March, March, April, May. Thank you. Moving on. No further questions. Sorry. All right, Karen. The staffing uh, changes since the last month. Are there any questions that you have for me about that? No, no questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Right. Moving on to correspondence to the board. Public comment. Thank you. Correspondence report. Sure. We, the Board of Education received one email regarding substitute teachers and paraprofessional pay. Thank you. Uh, we're at the end of the meeting. Do you have a motion to adjourn? All those in favor? A second, sorry. Do you have a second, Selena? All those in favor?